Hello and welcome to the MVS Show, episode number 477. I am your host, Roman Sanzo, and we got some news for you this week. So, let's hop right into it. First up is Tree of Harmony confirmed in My Little Pony, A New Generation. So, I'm just going to skip the whole thing that Sophisto wrote down and just point to that. Like, look at that. Someone asked one of the artists and she said someone finally noticed and wow that that is cool that is really cool uh, let's open up a bit and you can see the similar <laughs> you can see the similarities there okay so you can really see the similarities there like uh, how the shape looks and how some of the features are identical in um, shape but one of the few questions that arise is what happened like what happened to the tree of harmony that it became wooden and uh, the leaves the petals or whatever you want to call it like uh, why, why are they like that like wh what happened to the tree so this is one of those few questions that kind of pique the interest of uh, old school fans I, I know that g5 is meant to be a new starting point for the world and whatnot and uh how to put it so g g4 was its own thing its own um <clears throat> what do you call this uh closed or isolated universe from the previous generation so like what this generation one and two those are quite similar in um, tone or shape uh, that could be false because from what i understand g uh, the first generation uh, had all three pony types and including humans and some monsters uh, it, it had those what you call this uh, mythical element in it while in g2 they dumb it down to be more slice of life uh pre-teen kind of story beats and whatnot and all of them were a ponies uh, g3 got back into the whole thing of having uh, what you call this um other races um pegasi and wait, not races but species sorry uh, other species uh, like pegasi and unicorns and uh, they also included their own uh what was those small things called <clears throat> I, I forgot man it's one of those things but yeah uh but g4 here uh, g g4 is pretty interesting in terms of its world building because we had a lot of creatures we had a lot of characters we had a lot of world building that's that's the main point world building sorry um we we had relations with changelings dragons kirin sea ponies um what else did we uh, also got shut up phone um <clears throat> what also we also got um we we got a lot i mean um the abyssinians the cats and also the birds though those were uh, the creature types from the movies but still they're kind of in world they they exist not including the equestria girls thing because that is a whole other can of worms that i do not want to get into right now so g g5 when we jump into it uh it seems that we have gone way 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 into the future um i, I would say it's even beyond batman beyond but yeah, um, it's it's far flung way into the future, um, where things are different. Like totally, things are really different from uh, G four. One of the few things that I can say is that uh, before the movie, oh man, this could be spoilers. Nah, man. 
Now I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna stop it there. But what what I'm going what I say. <laughs> so what I will say and what's been shown on trailers and whatnot is that what happened to Equestria in the fifth generation, and that's the thing. It's part of G four, but flung way into the future, and we got no idea how many moons. All we know is that um, it could be thousand years, a hundred years, five hundred years probably, but we got no idea because the the setup was um, the, the the movie setup is like nobody remembers a uh, princess twilight, nobody remembers their adventures and whatnot, and they say that it's all just a fairy tale, and that there feels like it's been almost a thousand years, similar to how Princess Celestia and Princess Luna's fight happened. A uh, nightmare moon appeared, Celestia banished her to the moon a thousand years later, um, got Twilight to help and whatnot, and then uh, with that, he got to the end of G4, where she had her home, home student and their own adventures and so on. So, the question here now is, what happened? And all of that can could be answered, or probably might be answered, in its own series. And like I mentioned before, that there is its own thing too. So yeah, I mean, I'm not going to... Um, how do I put it? I'm not going to theory craft on what might or might not happen for now, because it's still in the unknown. Um, I, I I got no idea what is going on. Um, for now, the pot uh, the potential for the G five series is huge. Think about it. You have you have a past history of ideas waiting to be used, and you got a new series that has basically a blank slate. All we know is that technology exists. Um, it's almost to the real world with its uh, communications, its um, lifestyle, and so on. And with that, there's more. I mean, like the idea there is just amazing. But anyway, <clears throat> that's enough of me. Let's move on to the next news. So, new Easy Comes Home book may reveal an episode from the New Generation series. A new listing on Amazon for a book called Easy, Com uh, Easy Comes Home seems to tie directly to into an episode in the upcoming G5 animated series that will be released sometime in the end of 2022 on Netflix. Even the primary description on it cites a direct link based on the new, uh, the all new animated series, the My Little Pony. Friends go on a new adventure. In this, I can read only uh, read. <laughs> I can read comics, featuring a. Bold new comic style and easy to read text. This level one, I can read comic is pre perfect for every pony. Hmm. <clears throat> okay, so um, I wonder what kind of book is this. Oh no. Okay, it's a storybook. Okay, so anywho. The synopsis goes as so. <clears throat> when Easy tells Sunny stories about growing up in Bridalwood, Sunny suggests visiting Easy's favorite place in her hometown. Although Easy loves Bridalwood, the friends ultimately discover that home isn't a place. It's a being with it's being with your family. My Little Pony new series. Easy Comes Home is a level one I can read comic, which means it's perfect for 
shared reading with young readers new to graphic novel storytelling. So, hmm, that, okay, um, have to dumb it out, <laughs> uh, have to lower my expectations a bit because uh, the comic is quote unquote for new readers and whatnot, but we, we can take a we can take bits and pieces of what we got and see what this means. Okay, so first up is did did they say that this is new yeah 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 no I'm not hundred percent sure. Uh, it could be a story for the new series, or it could just be a new line of com level one comics, um, like this one per se. Welcome to Ponyville. Do they have any uh quote unquote screenshots inside the book? No, none. Okay, no problem. So. <clears throat> Um, this is pretty interesting. This is pretty interesting. Um, what I can say is this. The premise of it is really very interesting because uh, we didn't really get a full backstory of, for most of the characters. I say the other uh, fours. Because uh, since we start off the movie with uh, Sunny, uh, we... Obviously, we get a lot out of her, um, from her being a filly to her now. And also the interactions that she has with her friends to start off the movie. No spoilers there. Uh, but for the rest of them, like Easy, Hitch, Zip, and Pip? I don't remember names. But anyway, uh, for, the, for the rest of them, we got no idea how they grew up, what happened... Like how how they grew up, how their friendship with others in the community is, and um, other things. Like yeah, we we got no idea about that. So it would be a really interesting um, story to discover all of that. But besides that, yeah, I just can't wait. Um, Seth said the end of the year. So we'll just have to wait and see how that works. So let's move on to the last news. So last news is My Little Pony, a new generation, hits number one for top movie on Netflix worldwide. <clears throat> Sorry. Let me just take a sip. Oh boy, that's good. Sorry. Okay, according to the Netflix website, Flix Patrol. Flix Patrol, okay. My Little Pony, a new generation, has become the most popular movie in the world when you combine all of the different countries that host it. The full breakdown can be found over in the link there. We will have to see how long this maintains, uh, sorry, maintains the lead as it's only holding that for blah, blah, blah. Okay, anyway, um, that is very interesting. That is very interesting. Let's take a look, see, and yeah, let's just take a look, see. So, all the stats for the tomatoes is one hundred percent. IMDb is a seven point three. Blah blah blah. So on. So let's let's see this. Okay. Um. Today's date is the third for my country at least, but uh, we'll just take um what Netflix Patrol says here. So we'll take yesterday. Let's take an example. Can I zoom in? Uh, yeah, I, I guess that works. Guess that works. So, um, country based on what you call this alphabetical order, right? So anyway, um, as we go down the list, we we see that the movie has been staying strong at the top ten at least. Uh, its number one ranking has dropped down fairly a bit, but this is due to time, because the movie has been out for a few days now, and obviously it's 
kind of weighing down because a lot of people have seen it. A lot of people have kind of, well, yeah, um, seen it and passed on. Sorry. <clears throat> They've seen it and they enjoyed it and that, that's it. Some people will watch it again, some people will not. So um, looking on average, the movie has a 4.2 uh, rating. Or not really rating, but it's ranked. It's on an average of 4.2. And total point of... Oh no, you can't see that. Oh crap, yeah, yeah, sorry. Um... Average ranking is a 4.2. Total points is just 527. I got no idea about the point and what that means. But looking at some of the stats here, we see that the United States is holding strong with it being in second place. Uh, let, let's see my country. I, I'm really interested in how people are treating it. Okay, Malaysia. Malaysia has dropped down to number 5 a bit, but... Uh, when I saw it, it was in top 5. Yeah, so basically, it's still there. Mexico really loves the movie. And if you can see on the list, it's still 1 and 2 and 1 and 2. So it is there. It is really peaking there. And I'm going to close this for a bit. And this tells me that there are fans all over the world and I believe those fans are called bronies no duh hence this podcast <laughs> but anyway um, for me personally what I can tell is that the fandom is still going strong even though if uh, merch sales fandom interaction is not strong they're still there and the fans that are still around like myself watched it on Netflix and enjoyed the movie as is I mean uh, my Facebook group not my personal Facebook group but the group I'm in is still active some of the older bronies um, watched it and they commented on it and whatnot and yeah they're still out there and they're watching it. And that shows, sorry, and that tells me that there are still fans of the show out there. Even though they're not in the, um, even though they're not blaring it out like how it used to be, but it tells me that they're still there and they're enjoying their experience, even if it's in a low key manner. But overall, this I'm I, I really I'm <laughs> sorry. Overall, I'm really enjoying this and just having that state of awesomeness where everybody's just enjoying the movie is a lot of fun. But anyway, let's move on to well, next topic. And the next topic is what have I been doing my week? So. To tell you guys the truth, this week has been pretty same old, same old. Um, I did tell you guys that I watched the movie, right? Yes, I did, I did. Oh, um, talking about movies, I just remember something. Um, I watched another movie. I watched Shang-Chi, Legend of the Ten Rings. And I'm guessing that you guys at home might be saying, but Norman. Did it Shang Chi came out already in September? True, true. Um, but it ain't worldwide. Um, Malaysia got it around the thirtieth of of September. Really late, really late. But um, I go, I I watch it in the theaters, and man, the theater experience has been really, really awesome. Like I, like I miss watching movies and i think the last movie i watched was oh boy now i really need to remember i think it was godzilla vs kong yes that was the last one i watched i think i don't remember but anywho um that is a yeah um shang chi was really fun um i enjoy the character 
uh, and this is not some kind of pro Asian Chinese kind of thing. The the movie was great, and the acting was done well, and the whole setup for what's coming next is just awesome. I'm uh, personally, I got no idea who Shang Chi is in terms of comic because um, the way I consume or the way I know about Marvel characters and whatnot is through the Marvel animated cartoon series. So if they don't really show Shang Chi, I got no idea who he is. Uh, that same goes for the Guardians. When they first appeared, they were uh, they appeared in Fox's Avengers um, Earth's Mightiest Heroes. So I, I know them from there first. And then um, from Marvel vs. Capcom 3, uh, that is Rocket, and so on. But other than that, mm, no, 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 no. Uh, that's where I know them. So uh, Shang in Shang-Chi's case, I got no idea who he is and I... I would love to know. Um, probably I'll start doing research if I'm really interested or really digging it, or I could just wait. Waiting's fine. But anywho, um, <laughs> besides the Marvel movies, I did some tabletop role playing. Yes, I did some D and Ds. That's per usual. Usually happens on the weekends, um, Friday and Saturday. So two different campaigns. A lot of Oh, role playing a lot of mind thinking and whatnot, and yeah, it was a lot of fun. The experience is really good. Uh, other than that, um, nothing much really in terms of what uh, what's new uh, with the whole restricted movement thingy, and not many shops open. Uh, it's kind of been limited to what I can go to. So yeah, um, other than that, mm, nothing much. But anywho, anywho, let's uh, wrap it up. It's been a while now. <clears throat> so, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmbshowgmail.com. You can also catch us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Uh, you can also please <laughs> and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date, and also Stitch Radio, and also like our Facebook page. Links will be in the show notes below. Uh, if you like support the show, sorry, now I forgot this. Uh, also, please do subscribe and rate us on iTunes and Stitch Radio for the review discussion podcast. Over there, you'll catch me, Tara, and Tara reviewing pony episode, comics, specials, movies, and other things. And so now, I really need to get back to Tara and see how he's doing because. Uh, I'm sure he's not busy anymore, but I've been in the mind state where, oh, Terra's busy. So I really need to ping him. I mean, uh, hmm, now, I'm, now, here, now here's a question. Like, once you have your bachelor party, marriage is just a few days away, right? Right? Huh, you know. That is an interesting question. I should catch up on him and ask him how he's doing. Hmm. This is outing me out to be a bad friend. <laughs> Woo, please. Anyway, with that shenanigans out of the way, if you like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com such MTS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And here's thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight. Jeffrey, best of luck, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. Uh, about the exclusive and whatnot, um, uh, the Patreon members had a chance to see me react to the My Little Pony movie, A New Generation. It's me just watching the screen, almost like this, and reacting it, reacting to what I see on screen. Uh, it's one of those interactive videos where uh we start netflix together you play this video there's a few pebbly parts so uh, you can get stuff ready we count down we press the space bar we just press play and we watch the movie together 
notice a few things inside the film and you get to see me react to it and i hope you do too when that video comes out i'm not 100 percent sure how i'm going to do it there, there's a few things that i need to do because the patreon members get an ex a bit of an exclusive at the front before it goes to the real part of the video but anywho um that video might be coming out soonish can't promise you there but I have an idea. I have an idea. I promise you. And yeah, um, if you would like to get early access to it, Patreon. Yeah. Every every bit counts, yes. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo, and we'll catch you guys next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya.